My childhood was difficult. I grew up with my father and he treated me frankly badly. I've always dreamed of breaking out, building my life, finding my love, and generally being a happy person. Fate played a cruel joke on me when I returned home from work and found my wife and her father in the kitchen. I lost my job because of her deception, but she faced equally bad consequences. Now I'm going to tell you my story. Enjoy watching it. Hi, I'm Nicholas, a 28-year-old man, and I've been working in the police force for three years. My wife Carol is 25 years old, beautiful and charming. We met at a party through a mutual friend when I was 24 and she was 21. A year later, we decided to get married. I proposed to her during our vacation in Florida where I rented a yacht and made the proposal right there. She said, yes, and the happiness I felt at that moment is indescribable. As a result, we've been living together for two years, bought a small house, and enjoy our time together. Carol works as a lawyer in a firm, and she has always dreamed of becoming a top-notch attorney. I support her in this endeavor. My dream was to become a police officer because, as a teenager, I faced a lot of bullying and violence from local hooligans. I couldn't tolerate the injustices, and it fueled my determination to stand up not only for myself, but also for my wife. My father, Fred, was not the best role model. He constantly belittled me, and each bruise I got seemed to bring him pleasure. He was both physically and mentally abusive. My childhood was tough, especially after my mother passed away when I was seven due to a serious illness. After her death, my father changed, started drinking heavily, and brought different women home regularly. Our modest home became a place of constant turmoil. The impression I have is that he cheated on my mother, though I can't confirm it. The fact that he brought a new woman into our home almost immediately after her death makes me suspect. My childhood was far from idyllic, and my father was a difficult person. I was relieved when I moved out at 17 and I hadn't seen him for almost 11 years until now. All these experiences influenced my decision to become a police officer. I'm now in excellent physical shape and can stand up not only for myself but also for my wife. If I were to meet those who bullied me in my teenage years, I'm confident I could handle them. Carol appreciates the fact that I'm a serious and strong man. She has often told me that she feels secure with me, like behind a solid wall. In my daily life, I mostly patrol the streets or take calls, depending on the situation. Carol dedicates a significant amount of time to work and managing our household, and she excels at it. I believe she can be not only a great lawyer and homemaker, but also a wonderful mother. Whenever I bring up the idea of expanding our little family to Carol, she suggests waiting. She believes we need time to earn more money, buy a better house, and generally establish ourselves in life. I understand her perspective because if we have a child now and Carol stops working, my salary would barely be enough, turning our lives into a struggle for survival, which is something I want to avoid. So I agree with her that it's too early for that. Our peaceful life was disrupted when my father, Fred, suddenly appeared at our doorstep. It was a Saturday evening and Carol and I had just finished dinner, planning to watch an interesting movie when there was a knock on our door. I went to check, and there he was, my father. I had not seen him in the last 11 years and we hadn't even spoken. He is probably in his 60s, and despite his age, he looked presentable, certainly not like a homeless person. He came at me with hugs, and I reluctantly reciprocated. I asked him directly what he wanted. He explained that he was passing through the city and showed me a truck parked nearby. He works as a truck driver transporting goods between states, and due to some problems he could only pick up the cargo in three days. He asked if he could stay with me during this time. I wasn't thrilled about this visit. We hadn't seen each other in eleven years, and he never called or wrote, and now he casually comes and asks to stay in my house. It seemed absurd to me. I was glad he found a job and looked decent for his age, but coming to me with such a request without any prior communication, I just couldn't understand it. Before I could say anything, Carol intervened, having overheard the conversation. I asked her to wait in the living room, but Fred started telling her what he had told me. Carol, after a moment of contemplation, said, Why not? You haven't seen each other for so long. You obviously have things to discuss. I exploded and confronted Carol. 
asking why she made such a hasty decision without discussing it with me. She gave a clear and concise answer. I'm sure you need this. Just sit down and talk. I was infuriated. She knew about my difficult childhood and my strained relationship with my father. And there she was, showing in front of him that she disregarded my opinion. At that moment, I didn't recognize her. I was never a tyrant, always listening to her, but the finale was always mine. I push it her away, telling her to wait for me in the living room, turning back to my father. I told him to get out of my house and not to show up here again. Want to stay overnight? Sleep in your truck, but not in my house. His expression changed. Instead of warmth, I saw hatred and anger. That's when his true colors surfaced. I knew he wouldn't do anything to me. I was no longer the boy who couldn't stand up for himself, and I felt no shame in refusing him. I believe I did the right thing. Fred didn't say anything. He just silently left. I went back to Carol in the living room for a conversation, but she wasn't there. Instead, she was lying in our bedroom, turned away from me. At that moment, I realized she was upset with me. I had never raised my voice at her before, let alone used physical force. I understood all of that, but she shouldn't have meddled in my relationship with my father. That was my business, and I believe she shouldn't have interfered. Approaching her, I heard a faint snore. She was already asleep. It was 8 mo p.m., and it irritated me that she couldn't wait for me, even though I had been gone for just a couple of minutes. Covering her with a blanket, I left the bedroom. The evening was clearly ruined. Realizing I was partially at fault and wanting Carol to forgive me, I decided to surprise her in the morning. I quickly got dressed and left the house to start the car. As I pulled out of the driveway, I noticed Fred's truck was still parked nearby. I approached to tell him to leave, but he was gone. With no time to wait for him, I drove to the city center to buy a large bouquet, a box of chocolates, and a small surprise. The trip took about 50 minutes, and upon returning home, the truck was gone. I did a quick cleanup and prepared the surprise with flowers, chocolates, and a note of apology, hoping Carol would wake up to realize that yesterday's incident was a minor misunderstanding and how much I loved her. I woke up at 9 a.m. to a call from work. They urgently summoned me for duty on a Sunday morning, and my already bad state was indescribable. Not only did an unpleasant incident happen yesterday, but today I had to go to work, even though it was supposed to be a well-deserved day off. Carol wasn't with me, and I thought she had woken up earlier to prepare a delicious breakfast for me, eggs with bacon and toast. But when I exited the bedroom, my surprise, which happened to be a large stuffed bear, lay untouched. It disappointed me. There was no one in the kitchen either, and the house felt empty. I couldn't understand why Carol had to leave urgently on a Sunday morning. It remained a mystery. I tried calling her, but her phone was unreachable. I also noticed something strange in the living room. The couch looked as if someone had slept on it. Perhaps Carol decided to move to the couch during the night. I decided to drive around the neighborhood. How could I work peacefully when I had no idea where my wife was? After almost 30 minutes of searching, I received a message from Carol. Honey, Sarah and I went shopping. Don't worry. Love you. I lost my temper and went to work. The whole day was nerve-wracking. Why was Carol behaving like this? I hadn't done anything wrong. It was the first time such a thing happened in our marriage. I just couldn't recognize her. The day was tough and returning home around 7 p.m. earlier than usual. I once again saw that damn truck near my house. I was already in a bad mood. If this jerk was in my house, which was a violation of privacy, I could do whatever I wanted to him. Approaching, I pulled out a stun gun and hid it in my pocket. As I approached the door, I felt the aroma of freshly cooked duck. I was so hungry. I hadn't eaten all day, even though Carol usually took care of that. Before entering, I decided to listen to what was happening in the house. There was background music playing, and I could hear conversations, both male and female. Chills ran down my spine, and I began to tremble, but I kept myself together. It was difficult for me to imagine what was happening in my house. My wife sitting with a man, who was most likely my father, eating duck, listening to music, and God forbid, drinking wine. I pictured it, and my head started spinning. I didn't burst into the house abruptly, although they might have suspected I was coming since they could hear a car approaching. 
However, I really hoped it wasn't the case. First, I approached the truck, and as expected, no one was there. I was curious to know if it was really empty, but I put that idea aside for later. Then I went to the window where I witnessed this scene. My wife sitting in a sexy dress at our kitchen table, a large and delicious duck on the table. They were drinking wine, listening to music, and having a pleasant conversation. Fred's expression reminded me of how he used to bring woman into our home when I was little. He was very charming, and woman adored him. He knew how to manipulate people, but if something went wrong, he turned into a real monster. I had seen him abuse women for answering him in a way he didn't like, so I didn't want Carol to have anything to do with him. His deceit was immediately apparent to me. I was shocked by what I saw. I couldn't hear what they were saying, but they were laughing, joking, and my hands started to tremble. Suddenly, Carol took out her phone and started doing something with it. At that moment, my phone in my pocket vibrated, and I saw a message from Carol. It said, Darling, I cooked your favorite duck. I miss you terribly and can't wait for you to come home. When will you be back? She didn't mention Fred in the message. I decided to text her that I would be home in 30 minutes. She saw it, said something to Fred, and quickly sent me another message. Okay, waiting for you. At that moment, I was curious about what they would do next. Their words were indistinct, but I saw Fred caressing my wife's knee and Carol didn't seem bothered. It was absurd, something I hadn't expected to see. I couldn't take it anymore. I tightly gripped the stun gun in my hands and headed to the front door. I kicked the door with my foot and saw Fred getting dressed while Carol was caressing his back. Their reaction was indescribable. Without hesitation, I kicked Fred in the back, so he ran across the living room and rushed into the bathroom. Carol tried to calm me down, shouting and crying at the same time, but I was beyond that. I went to the bathroom to confront Fred, but he locked himself in. Without much thought, I grabbed a bat from under the sofa and began using it to force open the bathroom door. I don't remember what anyone was saying at that moment, but Carol was doing her best to stop me, while Fred inside the locked bathroom, proposed a truce. I paid no attention. My only goal was to teach him a lesson. Consequences be damned. I broke the door handle, but the door wouldn't open. I started kicking it with all my might, and on the third attempt, I succeeded. Fred was sitting in the corner of the bathtub holding a shower head. As soon as I entered, he turned on the hot water and the stream hit me right in the face. I felt like my head was going to explode from the high temperature. I quickly ran out of the bathroom into the living room and grabbed a chair. Carol wasn't in the living room at that moment. I threw the chair into the corner of the bathtub and heard a loud crash. The direction of the water stream changed. I quickly went in and grabbed a plunger that was near the toilet. I pressed the stinky plunger onto Fred's face, and he didn't even understand what happened because I did it so quickly. I also quickly grabbed him by the collar and dragged him out of the bathroom, then across the floor into the living room. Rage consumed me. I grabbed the first thing I found in my hand, which happened to be our wedding photo with Carol. I struck a couple of blows with that photo, and then I sat right on top of him, continuing to swing. I sat on him for a couple of minutes, and Fred's face was unrecognizable by then, just as the police stormed into our house. They pulled me off Fred and put handcuffs on me. Carol, my wife, had called the police. A month later, I lose my job, my wife, and could have lost my freedom to some extent if not for my connections in the police. Carol called the police to my own house, knowing that I was a cop, understanding that I could lose not only my job but also my personal freedom. But who knows, maybe it was the right decision, because I could have just gone all the way and not gotten off so easily. On the other hand, my ex-wife could have refused to invite my father into our house while I was at work, knowing that I was against it. Fred ended up in the hospital with serious injuries and later filed a lawsuit claiming $100,000 for damages. Carol initially filed for moral compensation, alleging that I had been abusive and she was under my pressure. This, of course, is nonsense, and it will probably remain a mystery to me why she changed so much. The real nightmare was just beginning. During the legal process, two months after the incident in my house, 
Carol made a sudden statement saying she was expecting a child from me and demanded that the court order me to pay $1,500 monthly for the child's upbringing and a comfortable life. I was shocked, but I accepted all the conditions. For four months, I was in depression, feeling like I had lost the most precious thing in my life, all because of my dad. But only after four months did realizations start coming to me, that I was being played as a fool. My friend Cynthia, an excellent lawyer, and I, who had studied together and kept in touch, met. I had put my car up for sale online, and Cynthia, seeing my ad, decided to find out what was going on. When she realized that my life was falling apart, she immediately came to help. She was the only person who wanted to talk to me. Everyone, neighbors, friends, and colleagues thought I was crazy and lying. Because what sane person would attack their father and claim that his wife was sleeping with his own father? It sounded absurd, right? With Cynthia, we spent an entire evening in a nice restaurant, and I told her everything in detail. When I finished my story and asked her, Do you believe me? She answered, Yes, and a tear automatically rolled down my cheek. Cynthia said she would call me the next morning. She declared that if her theory was correct, I could probably return to a comfortable life and start anew. I was intrigued, and I spent the entire night waiting for the day. At 10 Wadisrae a.m., Cynthia called me and told me to meet her at a local diner. I quickly got ready and went to meet her. Cynthia handed me papers where my signature was needed. It was a statement to appeal the court's decision. The thing is, Fred and Carol portrayed themselves as victims, claiming that I, being angry and irrational, had harmed them. All charges against me would be dropped if it turned out that Carol was pregnant not with my child, but with Fred's. This would change the entire game in my favor. Why didn't I think of it right away, I don't know. Carol, on her social media, posted things comparing me to excrement. Because of this, I lost all my friends and had no support, not even someone who could guide me on the next step. On that very day, I filed the statement, and within a week, Carol had to undergo a DNA test, which showed that Fred, my dad, was the father of the child. This news shattered me completely. I never thought they would go so far that evening. I immediately sent this news to absolutely everyone I knew. Because of this, Carol no longer looked like a victim. She appeared as a deceitful cheater, trying to fool everyone. I received significant compensation and bought back my beloved car. I won't go back to being a police officer. I don't need it anymore. I decided to become a self-defense coach promoting the idea to teenagers that fighting should only be in self-defense and conflicts should be resolved with words. Carol had to leave the town and later the state because everyone here knew her and ridiculed her. After losing the court case, Fred disappeared somewhere, but I don't care. I made it clear that it's better not to mess with me, although deep down I would like to talk to him. Cynthia and I started dating, spending a lot of time together, and you know what? I feel happy. I know that I will soon propose to her because we want a child. That's the story of my life. Sad and even scary, but for me it became a chance for a new beginning. I don't understand why Carol decided to do this to me, but it doesn't matter anymore. I am happy, and that's what matters the most. That's the end of the story. It turned out to be quite brutal, and a little different from the format of those stories that we published on our channel. We are interested to know your opinion on this story so feel free to write it in the comments below. Is it possible to condemn the main character for the fact that he could not restrain himself and attacked his father? Why had his wife changed so drastically after meeting his father for the first time? We believe that the main character has clearly crossed the line, and the fact that he was fired is at least justified because any policeman should be able to control himself, and the main character did not hold back which led to such consequences, you still need to be able to control yourself, especially when you work in such a difficult profession. As for the wife of the main character, we believe that she had previously met with the father of the main character. Otherwise, how can we explain her subsequent actions? The father was most likely jealous of his son, who was doing well in life and decided to harm him in this way. This is our opinion. We will be interested to see your opinion in the comments. Also subscribe to our channel, like and follow the appearance of new stories. We publish them daily. Good luck to everyone.